this is probably dangerous to have me on a, uh, a mic where there's where I don't have to hold on to it because that means I'm free to fly. So uh, be, be be aware, uh, anything's possible. Boy, this morning I'm so pumped and excited, and uh, you know it's like it's like that moment when you you, uh, you realize that the people that impacted your life are right there before you, and uh, you just want them to know how much it means, you know. And to see like 40 of you guys all here together today to come by and just say, hey, let's do it, you know. And just so proud of you guys too, but then to be able to be a, have a chance to do ministry. And as you're putting all the pieces together, maybe you came in late. Um, I was part of a youth group that radically changed my life forever. Forever. Never will be the same because of what God did in a little church in West Salem, Ohio. Um, a man desired to plant a church in a place that nobody else was thinking about. And he started reaching out to people that nobody else thought about. And my brothers and sisters, I, we were in that mix. They're all here today, and I don't know if this will, if we'll have this privilege again, but do you mind? I, you saw that good-looking guy on the keyboard. That's my brother. Uh, he looks a lot like me. So. Uh, but uh, my uh, younger sisters, Carrie and Sue, would you guys stand up? Would you guys stand up? Everybody right can see who you guys are. So now you know the pieces. And so, but you can't ask them for stories because they lie. They tell stories all the time. So, so don't even try. It's a waste of time because they make up stuff. It's just you know, it, you know, I got all that, all the brains. And so they, you know, that's so not true. Like, no, I'm a liar. I can tell you stuff. Oh my goodness. We bring it going, yeah. So, uh, but he decided to plant this church in a small town, and um, we had moved out into the country, uh, out here in this area, and some guys came to our, we didn't even have a house yet, we had a trailer setting on a lot, and these guys came, we were going to build a home and all that stuff, long story, but, but these guys came to invite us to Truth Baptist Church, and um, when we lived in North Ridgeville, we were part of a Baptist church, so we thought, well, we at least give it a try, and so we went to that church, and what would take place in the coming years would radically change our lives forever. We grew up in a very difficult situation. Uh, life was tough. Uh, we didn't have much money. Um, it was just difficult. We didn't have much, many means. But um, but God gave us what we needed. And he gave us what we needed through his son, Jesus Christ. And he changed us from the inside out because the people that are sitting in this room, the people that are sitting here, were, were part of that process. Some of them were my youth leaders. Some of them were my friends. Um, and... They did and said things that caused us to, to see life in a different way. Um, and without them, I don't know where we'd be today. The possibilities are great as uh, we go back to class reunions and, and see friends from, from past days and realize the path that perhaps we were heading on had it not been for Truth Baptist Church and the youth ministry that they had there, the things that they chose to do. Now, this morning, I'm going to step out on a limb, and I'm trusting God for this, which is really great because Hebrews 11:6 6 says, For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So God, I'm putting a lot of faith in my friends here this morning, so I'm counting on maybe some things that you may have to say or share this morning. I'm going to get this mic ready, and uh, in case there's something that you feel like that you need to share, we're going to let you be part of the message. Because... Long ago, I heard this song, and it was called, it's by Bruce Carroll, and it went like this. It said, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one every, any day. I'd rather one walk with me than merely show the way. Action speaks louder than word, learn, words, and all the words than all the words can say. That's why I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. Today, you're, you're privileged to be able to see a sermon because this is my message right here. Uh, and the beauty is, is that because of distance and, and time and money and finances and scheduling and all that stuff, you're only seeing a portion of it. Uh, there's so many more that are out doing different things for Christ. Many more are serving in the churches this morning in different ways and so different things going on. So um, that's that's kind of our story, but but this is a portion of what God did in my life. And so uh, what I'm going to ask for right, you, right now, if you wouldn't mind, if you were... Um, one of the students in our youth group, you're one of the people that uh, you would say, my friend, you would have to say that because you came all this way to be here. So but if you were one of my friends in the youth group, would you just stand up? You were part of this youth group. You're some of those that, that we actually went to church together. We sat in church together. We did youth group activities together. Would you just welcome them uh, this morning? <laughs> then there are... Um, 
then there, of course, the rest, you brought your families and stuff, so you can see a lot of great looking people here this morning. But also, uh, there were others in his room that uh, were my youth leaders at one time or another. They were either my youth director or our youth leader or part of the team. And uh, you guys, <laughs> you had your hands full. I mean, we were, we were, we were, I mean, all our kids that we have here are so nice compared to what we brought you guys. <laughs> and the grief that we brought you, right, right? <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> We were messed up kids, and I don't know why you kept us around. We would be the kids you would say, like, you know, one more time, one more time, <laughs> how many more times would there be? But you kept loving us anyhow. But you were youth leaders, you were youth directors, you were more than that. You opened up your homes to us, you allowed us to come into your life, you, you came into our life, um, gave so much. And uh, would you please stand before I get messed up here? All right. If you're one of my youth leaders, directors, please stand your feet. I don't know how to make it. He knows how to do this stuff really well. In case someone has, yeah, just turn it all the way. Maybe two switches if you need it. I don't know if anybody's going to share anything, but we'll just flip it all the way to the far if we need that. Um, check, check. Ooh, I'm hot. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I told you. You know, right here, you see that there's signs that says "reserved for the TBC reunion group." Now that wasn't to keep you out. It was to keep you safe. <laughs> that was for your protection. It wasn't like this is an exclusive group. <laughs> it was to keep you. Uh, to enjoy your morning and not be, yeah, uh, we're going to have so much fun. Uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't the only one impacted by these, the ministry that they had. There's so many different things um, that they did to impact our lives. Uh, they just loved us. We had a pastor that said this over and over again. He says, uh, everybody says that the youth are the church of tomorrow, so we really need to impact them. We need to, to do things to help teach our kids because one day they'll be the church, and if we don't, we won't have a church. You look in England, you can see that that's happened. They stopped investing in their young people, and, and Europe all around, you'll see where the church was so strong years, hundreds of years ago, and it isn't the case today. And if we as a country don't do the same, if we don't change that way, we'll do the same thing, follow, follow suit with them. But, but he would say, you say the church is tomorrow. He says, I'm telling you that the, the youth are the church of today. It's not tomorrow. What they can do today can change your life. And he said that so many times we started believing it. And our youth leaders started believing it. So it was, it was not uncommon for us to come to church and say, hey, Brian Scott, uh, why don't you guys go play a song? Like, we didn't practice anything. That's all right. Just play it. It's, it's for Jesus, you know. And his favorite, I think his favorite verse was, it's making joyful noise into the Lord anyhow. You'd be making a noise, but be for the Lord, you know. And so we, we, he just used us, and he, he believed in us. And his leaders did the same thing. You guys, you, you gave us opportunities to serve and get involved and stuff. So we're very, very thankful. This little youth group, now you say, well, there's a lot of youth groups around the church, around the world, and in different churches. And that's true. But in this small youth group, this small church, this youth group would not stay small because God got a hold of it. And some things started happening. We didn't schedule it. We didn't plan it. We didn't budget it. Um, it wasn't something that somebody could put together and make happen. It was something that God chose to do, and then we chose to respond to it. And, and uh, in that process, we got to see uh, this youth group. We would go to, uh, there was a thing called the Northeastern Ohio Youth Fellowship, and, and these youth groups would all come together from Northeastern Ohio, and there'd be these big rallies and big contests and big events. It was really kind of a cool thing because it could be anywhere from 10, 12, 20 churches Am I right? Is that I'm sure there was a lot, uh, a lot around that number. But it'd be all over Northeast Ohio. We'd come together, and and, um, and they have these big churches and big youth groups, and great things happen. And but this little church in West Salem started bringing more and more. And the, we have to fill up a bus, and and the guys have to uh, work on the bus and get it ready to go so we can go to these rallies. And next thing you know, we have to get another bus because we don't have enough seats on the bus to go to the rallies because everybody just started inviting their friends, and started inviting their friends, and and so we would see. Great things happen. We would go to youth camp and we would fill up a bus of kids and drive, you know, eight, nine hours to go to youth camp. And then next thing you know, next year we have to do a second bus because we have so many kids that want to go to youth camp. Um, we saw countless numbers of our friends come to know Christ because we, we just believed that that was the thing we were supposed to do. God was working in our heart and what happened with us and how he was changing us. We just figured our friends would want the same thing, right? So it's like, hey, you got to come with us, come with us. And we'd go to church, and then when we get done with church, the, in our little town, there was a, a restaurant that was called the Pizza Pad. And I didn't realize how little it was, because when I was at that age, it looked like it was plenty of room, but it wasn't very big. But uh, we would come in there after youth group, and I could, you could just see the look on their faces 
because I worked there as well too, so I remember how it was like, but they were like, oh no, here they come. Because we just packed this place out, you know, and uh, we just, we buy pizzas for each other, we just share them, we just eat until there's no more pizza, and hang out together, and, and uh, now we had a lot of different nicknames in West Salem, they knew us by many different ways, it's like Truth Baptist Church, you know, the kids at Truth Baptist Church, the youth group at Truth Baptist, um, our pastor had us cheer on the bus when we go to these rallies. He had to have us lead a cheer going, TBC, TBC. And that's what it stood for Truth Baptist Church. And that's who we were. That was one of our nicknames. It was fun, easy to cheer. But we were also known, at least the guys in our group, uh, we were also known as the Baptist Boys because we would just hang out together and these Baptist Boys just go and do things all the time together, wherever it was. You could see one, you'd see 10, 15, 20 of them just going doing things. Uh, sometimes... It involved the use of toilet paper, but I'm not sure to describe what took place, but it wasn't going to the bathroom. <laughs> so, um, because of that, we also earned another uh, notorious nickname. We were called the Holy Rollers. <laughs> roll people. So <laughs> it worked. That's who we were. We were. But that was one of the nicknames we, because we, we actually thought that was an act of love. We didn't understand later that it was against the law, but we really thought, you know, hey, these guys are so nice, let's go roll their house. They'll love us for it, right? And so, we really thought that. I don't know, it wasn't until years later, said, you know, really, actually, really, that's against the law? You're supposed to, oh, we're just wrapping them with love, you know? So, it was a lot of fun, good times. We even got some of our youth leaders out there, right, uh, right, Lynn? I remember, <laughs> she even helped us one time, so, uh, that was awesome. Uh, I'm probably getting her in trouble right now. <laughs> um, again, we saw so many cool things happen. Many of the people that graduated from here would go on to Christian colleges and, uh, and be able to find God's calling for their life in some cool way that way. Um, many of them would go on to ministry and choose to uh, follow God into ministry. Uh, some of us are serving at churches. Uh, and, and just an interest, interesting to see what God did, did through all that. I believe all of us that were part of that youth group, some way or another, have chosen to, to follow God and serve Him even years later. Now, the remarkable thing about this youth group is that we, we it's, it lasted. It wasn't just something that happened and then when it was over, it was done. It was something that really lasted with us. And so many are still serving the Lord today and it's impacted their life. Uh, but I, I believe all of us are in church in some way or another or we're there for each other. When something happens, that's crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it's really not me this time. Um, uh. <laughs> I don't know what to believe now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many of us uh, would be, you know, serving the Lord later, and then when difficult times would come in our life, even to this day, we're there for each other. You know, most people graduate from youth group, and once you do it on your own, and is that me? Yeah. So I apologize. Oh no. Maybe I'll try a different. Position. There we go. Maybe that'll work better. Hopefully. Uh, and so, you know, we've been there for each other through the difficult times, uh, and we can go into great detail about that. But this morning I want to ask if there was something that happened in your youth group time, whether you were a leader or whether you're one of the students, that you feel like maybe this morning it would be kind of cool just to give God the glory. Because, again, our pastor reminded us whenever we get nervous about sharing our testimony or whatever, he said, he said, remember, all you're doing is bragging on Jesus. When you share your testimony, it's just that simple. You know, in fact, the more you talk, the more we end up messing it up. Just talk about him. And so this morning, is there something where Jesus did something really cool in your life through this youth group experience uh, that shows that these years later, it really did make a difference? Anybody, uh, just raise your hand and Craig will be right there with the microphone. For you to share. Here's that faith thing that I was stepping out on. So here's that part. I'll, I'll just break the ice. Okay, we're okay. Okay. I just introduced myself. I'm attached to Carrie Price Weller. Okay. Well, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> Not scared of crowds. I'm a teacher, so you'll be all right. But the thing I wanted to say is that God is truly a faithful God, and He loves us no matter what. We Share a little bit about who I am. I'm, I'm widowed at a young age. I lost my first wife at the age of 26. We had four kids together. They're raised and gone out of the house. Carrie and I went to high school together. I can look around here. Brian and I got into a lot of trouble together at school. And I see Dana Fletcher back here somewhere. I hung around with Dana because he hung around with my cousins, which is one of them is right here. And we were all good little church boys. Okay? So we had a lot of fun there. But God used me in a different way. On target to go to Grace Wynola Lake to be a youth pastor. That didn't happen to me. You know, I was involved in a teenage pregnancy right away, so I chose not to. 
um, go serve the Lord in that capacity. So I had two kids right away, couldn't put diapers on the rear ends, couldn't put food in their gut, so I joined the military. Okay, God led me in the, in the Army. I, I served my time in the Army. Went to Desert Storm, got out of the, out of the storm. And my wife had, had some issues, went into surgery, never came out. So here I am with young kids. Well, this is about 10 years after high school that this happened. So our 10-year class reunion, I run into Carrie's best friend, and I say, hey, you know, if she wants an instant family. <laughs> Long story short, she called because she lost her mother at a young age. She was calling to see how our kids were, how my kids were doing. And God just blessed me in so many different ways. She, he brought Carrie into my life, and she accepted my four young kids. And it, it has just been a blessing ever since. And I can honestly say, I knew her in high school because we graduated in the same class. She chose to go one way, I chose to go the other way, and we both said, we're never going back to Wayne County. We're never going back to West Salem. And I ended up back there because it's a great place to raise kids. Um, she was in Atlanta at the time when she called, so I told her, I can't do this long distance thing over the phone anymore. I'm coming. I showed up on her doorstep on the 17th of December, 1994, and it's just been a good thing ever since. And to tie this all back together with what Scott's talking about, if she would have never found the Lord at Truth Baptist, we would have never been together. God just works in so many different ways. We think we have our path all chosen, and He can just say, no, that's not how it's going to work out, dude. This is what I need you to do. And that's how He does it. He blesses us even when we don't deserve blessings. So that's how it all turns together. Now it's somebody else's turn. <laughs> I, I can pick on somebody. I can just turn the mic off. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. I will. I hate to do this. <laughs> that being with the Price family, they were testimonies to us. The love they all shared amongst each other, the closeness that they had. Uh, they were always a joy when they came over. Um, they, it was just one group in a million, and I just wish, as you know, especially the, our boys, how well they got along, locking each other out of the house, doing all these horrible things to each other. <laughs> and I used to think, wow, why doesn't Scott and Brian get Of course, Brian, you were in a lot of the things. <laughs> Same shoes. Um, 
But that little church of 220 people, 200 people, would send 50 kids to church camp in the summertime. Unbelievable amount of kids. That same church, Vacation Bible School, would have 400 kids at it. You guys remember that? Unbelievable. My dad would, would I, I think this might have been a Lodi Baptist Temple, but another church my father had started. My dad actually let the kids, they had a goal, I don't even remember what the goal was, of number of kids, I think, to have there. And they let him, he let those kids, they met their goal, and what they received for their, their, their award was they were able to tar and feather my father. <laughs> so they had cups of honey, and they poured honey all over my father, and then threw feathers on him, and he had to walk around the circle in Rhode Island, Ohio, tar and feather. <laughs> but that was my father. And I love him today, he's gone, he's in heaven. And he's in a, a much better place than, than this place today. But uh, that one, that's what made Truth Baptist Church special. He not only loved adults, he loved kids. And he every church my father ever worked in, there was a strong youth group. Uh, but like I say, everything rises and falls on leadership, and that's the pastor of the church. Yeah. <laughs> you were 
why we couldn't climb out the window. We stopped. Oh, okay. yeah. You're right. Because that was the shade, we thought. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, from the moonlight and stuff, so that way you wouldn't see us. We were good, we had a plan, you know? says, then feed my lambs. If you love me, feed my lambs. It goes on in the next verse and says, he said to him again, a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He responds with the exact same response because he wants to make sure Jesus understands. You know that I love you. So Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him a third time, do you love me? The word literally means hurt. He was actually offended. He was broken. He, was, he, was, he felt, felt hurt because Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? In other words, do you, why do you have to keep asking me this? But do you remember that Jesus, that Peter actually denied Jesus three times? So he's given him three times to, to make it right. 
And he comes here and he says, and he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You're omniscient. You know all this. You know that I love you. And he goes, I says, you know that I love you. And Jesus finally says to him, then feed my sheep. You see the correlation is here. This, we, we're part of a church group that, I'm so sorry, I'm going to grab, grab this microphone here so that way we don't do that anymore. The correlation is simple in that um, we, if we love Jesus, there's a lot of things that we're supposed to do about that. Follow him, serve him, be holy. There's all kinds of things. But one of those things that's very clear in this passage, when you love someone, then you do something as a result of that. And, and many things that, made, things that happened in our youth group is because someone chose to follow Jesus because his life changed. And of course, we talked about our pastor, Pastor Browning. Pastor Carlos Browning's life changed, and he chose to follow Jesus. And then, of course, his response would be to feed his sheep. And we were part of that flock, and, and so, so many of us were impacted by that because he loved Jesus, he fed his sheep. This morning, I'm asking you, what are the people in your life that you would call that, that you would say are your sheep, or the lambs in your life? And, and for us, it should be our children, the kid, uh, kids that God's put in our life. Those are people that God would want us to be able to, to feed. And now, we're not just talking about food and clothing, but it, obviously, spiritually speaking here, this is talking about making sure that they have the opportunity to grow and to be able to be fed the, the things of the Lord so that they can grow in the Lord. Uh, we would be re responsible to feed the youth of our church. That's why you see this bus up here. That bus is a reminder of what Rick was talking about. This year, we want to take a bunch of kids to camp. We're a church about the same size he's mentioned, and we want to take that many kids to camp this year. Is it possible? Probably. doesn't make sense to anybody else, but we're believing by faith to do something crazy. But we need your help. We want to feed our sheep, and, and these kids get the chance to go away for a whole week and hear God in a way that's so much clearer than what they can do with, with 45 minutes or an hour once a week. And so we're, we're asking, let's help these feed these kids. Let's help, give the, uh, help them to have the chance to be able to grow in their faith in the Lord. And that's coming up. And, and the truth is we need to ask a lot of kids. So if you know someone who needs to go to camp, help us to help them get fed. Who else should we feed in our faith? Um, the, those that are younger in our faith, those that we know who've come to Christ since uh, more recently, it's our responsibility to feed the sheep. Uh, that's uh, We find that in the scripture all the time. Of course, the flock, anybody in the, in the church, those around us, it's our responsibility to help them to grow. Jesus says, if you love me, you will feed my sheep. That's our challenge today, that we would take this opportunity to go and to feed our sheep. Now, I want, to watch, want you to watch this video because it's pretty powerful. It gives us an idea of how we can do that. There's some simple things. We obviously think, well, boy, we got a lot of work to do if we're going to try to help someone grow spiritually. But sometimes it's the simplest thing. Check out this video. With anyone living or dead, who would you choose? If you could have dinner, he said. Oh, <laughs> Marilyn Monroe. Oh God, I don't have a clue. I know, straight up. Paul Hogan. Kim Kardashian. No, no, no. I'd like to have dinner with Justin Bieber. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's not coming to my house. No, um... <laughs> I'd have Bob Paul. Dave Hughes. Barry Humphreys. Jimi Hendrix. People who have made a difference in the world, maybe Nelson Mandela at the dinner table. If you could have dinner with anyone in the world, oh. who would you choose? Probably our whole family, like a whole extended family. Mum and dad? No, no, no. Does it have to be a celebrity? Could it be family? We love it. We talk about how school it is. We ask mum and dad how long their day was. Family. Yeah, mum and dad. Family. Who would you always like to have dinner with? They just want to be with us mm. while they're eating food, which is pretty cool. They see us above everything. I'm um, good. Yeah. 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 Bit, bit of a message in it for me. Yeah. <laughs> look up to someone, all of us do, and there are young people in our lives that are looking up to us, and we have the chance to make an impact in their life. I'm a product of that. I'm living proof of what would happen if you would just take the time. Just take some time. Invite an extra kid over. You know, let somebody be part of your life. You know, uh, we, we <laughs> the stories of things that we've done at uh, the 
many times we've invited ourselves over for Sunday dinner to, to so many of your houses where uh, you didn't know you had some extras, but here we come, you know, and that's all right, there's, there's enough for everyone. Um, and as friends, we would share lives. We had the chance to, be, to grow together and to learn from one another because we took the chance to give time. Today, God's going to ask us to be able to feed somebody in our life. There's someone looking up to you, and you have the chance to make a difference for them. They, yesterday, so many of you came together to help us to raise money to get kids to camp. Thank you for that. That's an impact. All of us can do something to make a difference for the, the next generation that is counting on us to be able to feed them. What will you do? Just take a moment right now to bow your head, close your eyes as we are getting ready to go to worship. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for letting us uh, change the schedule a little bit today. But I wanted you to see a sermon and just hear one. I'm convinced that the things that we heard today and, and seeing the, the lives that years later are still living for God because of that. No, are we perfect? Have we messed up along the way? All kinds of things have happened? Sure. But the love that we have for one another, the love we have for God, has propelled us to the place that where we're still trying to serve and trying to love one another. And today, we can have that kind of thing for our young people if we choose to invest in them and love with them, love them and help them to one, uh, love one another, to spend time with each other, that sort of thing. So today, who is it that God is asking you to feed? Is it a young person in your life? Is it a child? Is it a neighbor? Just talk to the Lord right now and let Him kind of motivate you. And is there somebody in this, in this room, perhaps, that uh, when we go to sing, that you could go and put your arm around and to engage with the love and just worship together? You know, if it's, uh, if it's good, if our young people want us to have dinner with them, they probably want to worship with us, too. So maybe when we go to sing this song, part of the invitation can be you reaching out to a young person, one that you know. It could be your own child. It could be a friend. Somebody else that's younger in the faith that looks up to you. And this is a chance for us to, to feed the sheep, to tend the flock that God's asked us to do. We each can do something. And if we dare to step out by faith, we might get rejected. It's possible. I'm finding out more times than not, those in our life are wanting us to share life with them. And we know life to be found in Jesus Christ. It's not just spending time and, and doing something nice. It's talking about the Lord and Savior that's changed our life. Having conversations about the difference that He makes daily, the time we spend with Him, the chances we have to witness to others, the things we've learned in the Scriptures, the stands we've made for the Lord, whatever it may be, having those conversations causes us to grow. I know these leaders did it for me. I want to do it for someone else. And hopefully you do as well too. Who is God asking you to reach out today? And then my question would be, how are you going to do it? What are you going to do about that? God has a challenge for us today. Stand up if you would as we get ready to worship. Let's pray.